Running audio over Cat6 cabling over Ethernet changed the way I design studios and it can save you thousands of dollars in wiring your studio. Let me show you how. Before we jump in, my name is Wilson Harwood and I am a studio designer and acoustician based in Nashville, Tennessee. I have a free workshop for you guys. If you're on this journey of building your home recording studio, just check it out at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's dive in, enough fluff. Let's get to what you're here about, which is how to wire your studio properly. Let's dive in. All right, so here we have uh, one of my new favorite websites, which is called soundtools.com. And this is something that I think a lot of people don't realize, but you can send audio over ethernet, like without Dante or anything, just literally you can send each ethernet cable can carry four XLR channels of audio. So this is really important to understand, to understand how this whole system works. You'll notice that there's these stage boxes. This is more common in the live world scene, but I think it should be more common in the studio world as well. So what I like to do in all of my studios is I do two things. One, I like to use the wall cats, which are right here, the wall cat four, which gives us a wall plate of four different XLR channels. And if we're going to feed in from say, you know, a place in our studio, we have four female XLR channels here, which we can plug in our microphones. We can also remember, we can also plug in keyboards or guitars or anything you want through a DI box on the floor or anything that can convert an XLR to a uh, sorry, a quarter inch or quarter inch TS cable into a XLR cable. Um, you can also get them in the male version as well, which I'll talk about in a second. So this would be the return if you wanted to have, say, a send from your to like an amp or something in the room, you could have that. Um, so you're sending audio. Um, but for the most part, uh, this is what you're probably going to place. If you wanted to have more than four, we'll just get more than four outlets and you can put them ne next to each other. What we honestly do in a lot of our studios, I'll show you at the end of this video, is we place one of these on either side of the drum set uh, for a total of eight channels and then maybe two room mics that are across the floor closer to the desk in a, a one room studio. If you want more than this, you could put, you know, four on or two sets on each side so you could get a total of 16 channels for the drum set i don't know about you but there's not too many reasons why i need more than 16 channels on a drum set but you never know uh, so that's one situation that we do the other thing we do i want to take you back here um, to what we've got here let's go back to their home page the next thing i like to do is use their super cat sound tails rj45 cable now this is what I run behind the desk. So we've got each one of these cables is a single RJ45 connector, the same type of thing you would plug into your ethernet for your ethernet, um, a router in your home for Wi-Fi, same technology. And what we're gonna do is you can plug this in to a uh, place behind your desk and then plug these ends in directly into your interface. Uh, so this is a really good system for a lot of studios, home studios, that I think eliminates the need for using uh, a more traditional thing like the Redco boxes or running a snake through your wall, which can get really expensive. Like, yes, this is $130, but everything involved in this is cheaper and easier in my opinion. So what we're gonna do here is behind your desk, for example, you might buy this four gang uh, Keystone Jack plate right here so you know you can get one piece for 399 super cheap you order that and then you can see here that you're going to place these keystone jack connectors inside of that wall plate there um, you might i also recommend that we you know you put this inside of a junction box so any junction box will do they're usually like the blue covers you see in the electrical aisle at home depot or lowe's and that's what's you can then putty pad around that for isolation or you can do a surface mounted box which i like even more uh, which then runs the single wire through the wall and use putty uh, acoustic sealant around that um, but let me show you the next thing that we want to do is get the uh, keystone jacks here and you want to make sure that it's shielded this is important we want to have shielded cables and we also want to have shielded keystone jacks because all of that is going to help you with your um, 
EMI, electromagnetic interference, um, and making sure that you're getting the cleanest possible audio through that cable. What's really interesting is that these cat 6 ethernet has better shielding than xlr cables so a traditional snake through the wall doesn't even have as good shielding as an xlr cable so these guys two pieces just 10.99 you can spend 50 bucks and get 12. again not going to break the bank and then we want to use cat 6 a cat 6 a cable so i like to use cat 6 a uh keystone jacks and you might be wondering like okay wilson like what in the world is the difference between the cat 6a versus cat 6 so that's a good question so the cat 6a is generally going to give you better data transfer better shielding than just cat 6 so i usually recommend cat 6a uh everything so cat 6a uh, uh, connectors here cat 6a cables here and then all of that will connect beautifully with these rj45 uh, cables. You'll mention see that they say Cat 5e. Cat 5e is just the lowest quality cable you can use to do all this stuff. I decided I think I like going with Cat 6a. Um, I also do not necessarily recommend using Cat 8. There's a lot of people that think it gives you better quality audio. What it's mainly meant, Cat 8 is meant for data centers. So it's really meant for getting extremely fast uh, data transfers over a short distance. So cat 6 a is going to be even better, especially if you're wiring, uh, information, uh, ethernet for your studio or something, and you need to go from your house to your backyard. That's going to be better. So let's go to the cabling. Now. Uh, one thing that you may not be familiar with is this term called riser. Uh, again, you want to make sure you're getting shielded cable, so don't buy the unshielded. We everything shielded with audio. So we want to get the, there's riser, there's plenum, and then there's direct burial ethernet cable. So you might be wondering, Wilson, which, which one should I buy? That's a great question. <laughs> and the answer depends on where you're gonna place it. So riser is generally gonna be good um, for any indoor use. So running it through your walls, um, running it you know, around the studio, like that's gonna be riser. Now, if you end up having to run it uh, in your ceiling or under a floor or something like that, you might want to do the plenum. What that's going to do is when it burns, in case there's a fire, it won't introduce toxic fumes into a, an airspace that could be shared potentially with an HVAC system. So again, this is mainly used in more commercial settings, but technically there's a reason for it. And then direct burial probably sounds like it is. If you're going to use this outside and bury it, uh, you want to use the direct burial ethernet cable here. Um, and that would be the choice. So you might end up using a combination of the two, but you know, for 300 bucks, you can run a thousand feet. Uh, so pretty, pretty amazing there. Uh, let's see if this one has anything lower than a thousand feet. Looks like that's all they're saying. You might be able to find it from another supplier, um, who can, can do a little bit less there. Uh, but yeah, that that is the cool thing about that. So here's your toolkit here for the sound tool stuff. You're going to get this guy, you're going to get the wall cat four, and then you're going to also get the different pieces that you need here uh, to connect everything together. So a pretty awesome little system. I'm a big fan of it. I'm trying to move everyone to using this in all their studios. We still do some Redco designs. You can look up Redco if you're not familiar with them. Um, but that's like traditional XLR uh, driven systems with, you know, snakes in the walls, or you might want to use a full, um, you know, patch bay or something like that. Uh, but, you know, for most home studios, I think this is a much better setup. So with that said, I wanted to finish off this video by showing you guys an example set of plans that we have. So let me show you that. All right, so here's an example set of plans from one of our clients on a studio we recently did. And, I, and this shows that exact setup that I just taught you guys. So you can see here the red is our ethernet lines um, right here. And then we have our XLR lines, which is still ethernet, but this is going to be our XLR. And I'll explain the difference in a, in a second here. So basically right now we have these headphone jacks and I'm gonna make another video on this, but you can send headphone audio over ethernet as well. And it's a, it's a better way to do it these days than through traditional quarter inch or eighth inch jacks. 
Um, and so this shows the electrician or, or you yourself just how you're going to wire everything together and which connects to which. So this shows you those home runs um, that we're going to do there. And, and that's super important so that you know exactly what you're doing in the studio. Um, and here we in the front here, we've got the four shielded RJ45 Keystone Jacks integrated with the Supercat Soundtails RJ45. We've got the three three gang headphone outlet right next to it right here. Um, and then uh, that's all going to be good there. Four gang uh, ordinary power outlet and a four gang ordinary power outlet over there. And then one other thing I'll say is that you generally want to keep your line level voltage um, not at least one foot away from your low level voltage, which Ethernet would count as low, a low voltage line. Um, if they have to cross, it needs to be 90 degrees. Uh, so that's important to note there. All right, so overall, I hope that was super helpful for understanding how you can use audio over Ethernet in your own home recording studio and how we do it at Soundproof Your Studio. Uh, it's one of those things that I started using when another client brought it to me and said, hey, this is what, how I want to use it. The main thing to remember is that you can send four lines of analog audio. This is analog. This is not Dante. This is simply converting a signal from, you know, one type of line, which is the XLR line, to the Ethernet line RJ45 CAT 6A, and then back to the XLR. That's all it's doing. It's not doing any sort of digital conversion. So you're staying analog the whole way. And that's important to realize. If you guys have any questions, just let me know uh, in the comments. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wilson Harwood. I'm a studio designer and acoustician based in Nashville. And if you are on this journey and you're like, hey, I've learned a lot on YouTube. I've done a ton of research and I still feel confused and don't want to do it all myself. Uh, you're a prime candidate for a soundproof clarity call. This is a 30 minute call where I go over what I do with you and learn about your project and see if I can help you in some way, shape or form. To do that, just sign up right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash step one and you can sign up on my calendar for a 30 minute call. For those of you who aren't quite ready for that, who want to keep it more DIY, I totally get it. That's why I have my soundproofing workshop. It's a uh, 30 minutes of in-depth teaching going over exactly everything that I would do to build a soundproof home recording studio uh, from scratch. So I just teach you that from the ground up. And to watch that, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop, and you can sign up and watch it right away. All right, I'll see you guys all next time next week with more information on soundproofing and room acoustics. Thanks so much. Thank you.